Hey folks, it's Mangrel. In this video, we're going to take our Cadex Vista and remove its case so that it's about 10 grams lighter. And that should hopefully make our iFlight A75 HD, which is this quad here, fly a lot better. If you haven't seen our video on this quad yet, link up here. So first thing we have to do here is take off this canopy. So we'll remove the antenna. And the canopy is held in with just these four tiny screws here and they're self-tapping screws. So we'll go ahead and open that up. And these screws just tap right into the plastic. Okay, so now our top canopy is loose. Let's go ahead and take off the antenna. So we'll take the antenna, get it out of the way. Okay, so now let's take our camera cable off. Ooh, that's got, oops, so that's got uh, quite the bend in there. Tiny screwdriver to pop this out. Now, if we look closer at this, we can see that the uh, stack screws don't go into these 20 millimeter holes. They go into these holes here, and that makes perfect sense because a wood board is 25 by 25. It's not 20 by 20. So we will have to open up our stack screws. So let's get rid of uh, our battery strap here first. And then here are the four screws for the stack. So let's take that apart. I'm not going to remove them fully because I wanted to keep pressure on the light control in there. All right, so there we go. We have our Cadex Vista removed. Now, actually, I think the first test we want to do here is a little bit of a temperature test. So what I want to test right now is how hot does this become after being on for let's say two minutes. Okay, so it's been two minutes now. So we're at 50, about 53 degrees Celsius at the very top. And then the bottom is about 50. Okay, so now we have the Vista all by itself. Let's do a quick weight check. We have the Vista, we have these connectors. So the Vista by itself is 18 grams. So let's see, our target really should then be to make this an eight gram Vista. And considering that it became 55 degrees after just two minutes of sitting there, I wouldn't suggest something like this unless if you really have no other choice, if you need to save that weight because it's a tiny whoop in our, in our example, or if you're hitting some sort of very strict uh, weight restrictions. I can definitely see this causing issues with the longevity, with probably the reliability. So I wouldn't suggest doing this unless if you really have no other choice. Like us, we've got a 69 gram uh, whoop here. So if I can save 10 grams, that's a huge weight savings. Okay, so let's go ahead and start opening this up. We've got all these screws around here. So we'll just go ahead and open these screws up. Now, typically you would have screws in the bottom as well, but those screws were removed by iFlight when they actually built this. So yeah, already it's falling apart. So now we have these two pieces which are connected by a ribbon cable. So we want to remove very carefully this ribbon cable. So you can get your finger in there and just slowly pry it up. And again, very carefully. And what may help is a little tiny screwdriver Okay, so now we have our two pieces here. So let's go ahead and remove this cable completely. Okay. So 
we got our ribbon cable. So just set that aside for the time being. And now we have our two halves. And these two halves are not really attached with any screws anymore. We'll just have to very carefully pry it from the board. Oh, it came up very easily. Just grab this piece. And we see a lot of heat transfer material, which is fine, we'll clean it up. Um, and I think the other piece to bear in mind, there's some sort of gasket here. And I think that gasket does provide it with a little bit of uh, maybe water protection. So if any water or any moisture tries to get in there, I think that gasket will do at least some kind of uh, intrusion prevention there. Also, we have a lot of little components. So the chance of damage to this, if you crash, you know, a, a branch pokes through, anything like that, that's quite high. But given that we have no choice, we'll keep moving forward. Now we'll do the same thing on this side. So I'm just using my finger. I don't want to use any sharp objects. Just use my fingernail to go around the edge. Yeah. So that's a lot of heat, uh, thermal paste, heat transfer material, whatever you want to call it. So I think what I want to do now is maybe just clean this up a little bit. So we'll just use some 99% alcohol, Q-tip, paper towel. All right, so this will take a little bit of time. We'll come back when it's all cleaned up. We got these all cleaned up. What seemed to work the best was taking a toothbrush and the alcohol and I was able to get the thermal paste out of every single hole here and every single component. So that looks very, very good. I mean, I think we could have probably made it a little tiny bit cleaner, but I think this is very, very good. So alcohol, toothpaste, no, not toothpaste, <laughs> alcohol, toothbrush, and make sure that you don't get any of the thermal material inside these connectors. But the bottom piece looks like it has the most amount of thermal paste, which is the one with the two chips. But that's all cleaned up. And then the top piece, there was a little bit of thermal paste on the top here. Nothing on the bottom, so that was already all clean, ready to go. Connect this ribbon cable, and the two sides are different. So you can see one of the sides the inside is filled in, one of the sides of the inside is uh, empty. So you wanna match it up. So it looks like the bottom piece with the two chips gets the piece that has the hole. So we'll plug that in. Okay. And then the top piece, it's this one. This is very important. Make sure you put a small piece of electrical tape on both sides of the ribbon cable so there is no exposed metal touching the board. Otherwise, it'll cause a short. So now what we have to do is we need to create some spacers. So it looks like we need spacers that are about three and a half millimeters. So let's go over to our 3D printer. We're going to print out some M2 standoffs. You can get the print file from our Thingiverse page. I'll give you a link in the video description. You can print them out. Only takes about three minutes and print them out in TPU. We got our TPU spacers printed. So these are three and a half millimeters. And what should happen They should fit in between the two boards perfectly. So there's still a, a lot of clamping force on these two boards. And that's what will keep our ribbon cable nicely secured. And the ribbon cable has a piece of foam on top, so that should prevent any damage. But this will prevent it from coming unplugged in a crash or anything like that. And now if we look at our iFlight Whoop here, we see this goes in here, but now we have 
a lot of space between the boards. So we can remove one of these O-rings. Let's get one of the O-rings out. So when this thing fits here, we should have just enough thread to put a little uh, nut on there. But before we install it, let's check and see how the weight is. So nine grams, it was 18. So we didn't save 10 grams, we did save uh, nine grams here. Now we want to do a check of the temperature and we will do the same two minute test here. So we can already see it's hitting 57 degrees after 20 seconds, 58 degrees. Mm -hmm. 63. Yeah, so it's warming up very, very quickly here. Seventy, seventy-five. This is really only an issue when the quad is not flying. When it's flying, you have so much airflow that the temperature is actually pretty low and the Caddx Vista is cool to the touch. Okay, it's getting too hot to hold. Okay, so after one minute, it already got to 77 degrees. So we'll take a little bit of finesse here. We need to pause for a second. You just saw the Caddx Vista being installed in the factory orientation, which is having the connector facing towards the back. It's a better idea to have the side with the cable actually pointing to the front of the quad in the same direction as the connector coming off of the flight controller. We have one left, but oh, we lost one. It looks like the stack screws are 1.5 millimeter screws, and I can't seem to find any nuts that are 1.5 millimeters. I even called a couple of local hobby shops and they do not carry 1.5 millimeters and they said everything is two millimeters or more and that for all the whoops that they carry folks use two millimeters so what i ended up doing was i ended up replacing the 1.5 millimeter screws that came with the kit here with two millimeter and these are two m2 by 1.4 so these go through really nicely and they actually end up threading right into the board. So the board is a little bit under two millimeters and the board acts like a nut itself. So right now you can see this is very, very tight. We used our spacers. We went with uh, four millimeter spacers instead of the uh, 3.5 just to give us a little bit more clearance. And then what we also did was we cut the canopy a little bit shorter just using a exacto knife so now if we check this out we can see that it looks a lot more compact and this actually looks kind of how it should be meant from the factory so all we got to do is plug in our camera put this all together and we're done And here it is, the final product. Let's do a quick weigh. And this was 80, no, this was 69 grams previously. So it actually looks like we have saved exactly 10 grams by making this change along with making our canopy a little bit smaller. 
And one more modification that we're probably gonna make is to change the antenna. We've got a Singularity antenna for TrueRC, and that antenna is one gram versus this being three grams, so we should save another two grams there. And then the final piece is we're gonna upgrade our ESC to bi-directional D-Shock. So that's gonna be coming up in future videos. Make sure to stay tuned for those. Like, subscribe, comment.